All right. Practice quiz one 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 two. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, number one, we got a diagram to the right. Uh, we got to be careful that we're using correct symbols. So number one, name the plane to the left. So there's two options. The easiest would just call it plane S. Uh, or if you'd like to, you could use any three points on the plane, um, but they cannot be in a straight line. So you cannot pick D, E, B. Um, you'd have to use F somehow. So an example answer could be plane D, E, F if you want to use three letters. Part B, name three points that are collinear. So remember, collinear means they live on the same line, which would be points D, E, and B. Part C, name a line, so I know I'm going to have to have the line symbol. Name a line that intersects the plane at point E. Intersects means it, it cuts through, so we're thinking this line right here. So I have three options for points, A, E, C. Uh, to name a line, you can pick any two you want, so I'm just going to call it A, E. There are other answers you could use. Um, part D, now we're talking about the actual distance, because if you notice, there are no symbols above these things. So when there's no symbol above, that's talking about a distance. So the distance from D to E is 4, and the distance from E to B is 5. Um, so D to B, I can add those up, use segment addition, would come out to be 9. Uh, part E, complete this sentence. Ray EB, so let's kind of draw that on our drawing. Ray EB starts at E, goes forever in this direction. And blank are opposite rays. Opposite rays mean they go in the complete opposite direction. They form a straight line. So this one is going to be ray ED because it starts at E and goes forever through D. Part F, if AC is 10 and CE is 6. So let's come over here and let's get in our drawing. AC is 10. So that is this entire distance here is 10. Uh, CE is 6. And we need to figure out what AE is. So I can do 10, subtract 6, and get an answer of 4. All right, so let's move down now into section 1.2. Um, we have a number line here for this one, and we need to find some distance between some points, maybe find a midpoint. So what is the distance from F to G? Well, F is at coordinate 3, G is at coordinate 8, and the distance between those two, you can subtract and do 8 minus 3, is 5. You could also count spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do not count kick, tick marks, count spaces. So what about from B to F? Well, B is here at negative 7. F is at 3. So we got to go all the way from negative 7 to positive 3. And if you subtract those numbers, 3 take away a negative 7, you will get 10. You also could count the spaces. So the correct answer there is 10. What coordinate or what number on the number line is the midpoint of BF? Well, the midpoint of BF, let's just find BF. B starts here, goes all the way to F. So F is at 3, B is at negative 7. A um, couple different ways you could do this. The fastest way is to find the average of those two. To find the average, you add the two coordinates up and chop it in half. So negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4 divided by 2 gives me an answer of negative 2. And let's just verify. Yep, that looks like it's in the center. So the answer would be negative 2. Um, some people might look at the total distance and say, well, the total distance is 10. So the midpoint would be go 5 from either direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would also get me at negative 2. So you didn't really have to do the average. All right, moving to number three, if M is the midpoint of NP, one of the statements below is true. I would suggest you sketch a diagram. So M is smack dab in the middle of segment NP. So I'm going to draw this. There's N, there's P. M is in the middle. Now I show it's in the middle by putting these two congruency marks. So now what's true here? And it looks like the only true statement is that the distance from N to M equals the distance from M to P. All of the other ones are false um, because they all have an NP in them. And NP is the total distance. And then they're saying that it equals halfway. So those would not be correct. 
All right, let's move to the back side. Um, number four, very important question here. E is between, okay? Between means, well, it's right here, not the midpoint necessarily. So when you're doing this, if it's not in the middle, the only thing you know is that the left-hand side, DE, added to the right-hand side, EF, has to be equal to the entire segment, which is DF. And if I put the values in, the value for DE is 3x minus 1. The value for EF is 13. And the grand total is 6x. And now we have an algebra equation on our hands. So I've wrote the equation. That's part A. Now we need to solve for it. So I have three terms over here. So I'm going to combine like terms and get 3x plus 12 equals 6x. And now I'm going to attack the smallest variable. I'm going to minus 3x from both sides, which gives me 12 equals 3x. Divide, divide. And I get x equals 4. So I solve for x. That one's done. Now I need to substitute x in to find the true length of df. So this represents the true length from d to f. So I'm going to take that 4. I'm going to plug it in. And 6 times 4 equals 24. So the distance from D to F is 24. All right, moving on over here to number 5. Uh, Q is in the middle of PR. So we draw this. Q is in the middle of segment PR. Uh, I now need to label. PQ is 2Y. QR is 8Y minus 12. And since it's in the middle, I do know that PQ is the same length as QR. So I substitute my values in. 2y equals 8y minus 12. Um, I'm going to violate my rule here. I'm going to subtract the bigger one because I don't want to wipe out the left-hand side and make it 0. Uh, you could, but it's just a few extra steps. So that's negative 6y equals negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 6. And we get y equals 2. So we solved the equation for y. We wrote it. We drew it. Find the length from q to r. So I identify the length from q to r is right here. So I need this expression. I take the 2. I jam it in. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract 12, which gives me an answer of 4. So that equals the distance from q to r. And that wraps up the 1112 review. All right, so now we're moving on to 1314 practice quiz. And uh, first part, classify. We either have to say acute, obtuse, right, or straight. So this angle right here appears to be right, which means it's 90 degrees. Now, if you are bigger than 90 degrees, like number two, you're considered an obtuse angle. That's greater than 90. Uh, number three looks less than 90, so that would be acute. And number four is a straight line, so we say that it is a straight angle. So you're just naming there. Okay, moving right along. Down here at number five, um, I have the measure of DCQ. So DCQ right there, that's 29. Uh, QCB, which is right here, is 98. And they want me to find DCB, DCB. So they want me to find the entire angle. So I'm going to add those two together. And I'm going to get, well, will that be 127? So 127 degrees is your answer there for number five. Moving on over to number six, um, RIJ is this angle. That's what we're trying to find. Um, HIJ, which is the entire thing. And remember, you want to go on the inside of the angle. Don't go around the back side. Uh, the interior is 105. HIR, which is this little sliver, HIR, well, that's 36. So I'm not sure what this angle is, but I do know that 36 plus something has to come out to be 105. So it's a subtraction problem. So I'm going to minus that 36, and I get 105 minus 36 comes out to be 69 degrees is 
angle Rij. All right, moving on down to the next section. It says name the relationship. Uh, so these are special angle pairs that we need to kind of name. And we'll use this in proofs later on. So these are important vocabulary terms. Number seven, I see two angles next to each other. The big concept here is that angle B and angle A, they share a side. So they're next door neighbors. Uh, I don't know what they add up to. So I'm just going to use adjacent. I'll just put ADJ for short. Uh, number eight, well, these are two angles that are formed by two straight lines, and they're actually opposite of each other. And we know that they're congruent, so those are called vertical angles, and we know that they're equal. Um, number nine, I have two angles that share a side, so they are adjacent, but there's even a better term for it. Because they form a straight line, they form a line pair or a linear pair. So technically they are adjacent, but more descriptive would be a linear pair. And just for future reference, they add up to 180. Number 10, the most important part of this picture is this little box means that these two angles add up to 90. And anytime two angles add up to 90 degrees, they are called complementary. Which reminds me that this angle over here, if you add up to 180 degrees, you are called supplementary angles. All right, let's keep going. Down here, number 11. So now we're actually trying to solve and find some measures. Um, these two form a straight line. So I know that B plus 131 has to add up to 180. So I can subtract 131. You didn't really have to formally do an equation. Um, but we do figure out B is 49 degrees. Um, number 12. The key factor for number 12 is all the way around has to be 360 degrees. So basically we have three pizza slices here. We have 214, then we have the 114. So, so far we are up to 328 degrees. So to figure out this little piece that's left, we have to do 360 minus 328 which looks like it shakes out to be 32 degrees. All right, now we move into some algebra. Going down here. So we got number 13, find the value of x. So I kind of look at my diagram and I see a straight line. But I see this side is 90, which then tells me to add up to 180. These two have to add up to 90. So it looks like we got 90 degrees here. And if this side is 48, I can figure out this side. I can do 90 take away 48, which is 42 degrees. So this expression, I need to find the x that makes it work out so that it's 42 degrees. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to get 40. And I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I'm going to get x equals 8. And that's what they wanted, find the value of x. Um, 14 is just a vocabulary problem. Complement means they add up to 90. So 62 plus somebody equals 90. Uh, subtract, and you will find out that 28 degrees is the complement of 62 degrees. Moving on down to number 15. Similar idea, but now we are finding the supplement. So supplement is 180. So 47 plus the supplement has to come out to be 180. So again, it's a subtraction problem. Correct answer here is 133. All right, number 16, getting a little bit tougher here. Uh, find the measure of EAD. So this is what I got to try to find. Or no, it says if it equals 90. My bad. So we know that we got a 90 degrees there. And we know that BAC which is right here, this little sliver, is 2x plus 10. And DAC is 3x minus 5. So we need to find the measure of FAB. Well, first things first is, since this side's 90 and we have a straight line, these two added together have to be 90. So that'll give me my 180. So I'm going to set up an algebra equation. The 2x plus 10 angle plus the 3x minus 5 angle have to be 90. So now I'm going to combine like terms over here on the left-hand side. 
Uh, I'm going to combine my x's to get 5x. I'm going to combine my numbers to get plus 5. The right side stays the same. Now I'm going to just use algebra. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 5. And I get an answer of 17. Now that we're not done yet though, because we still haven't found fab. So where the heck is fab? So angle fab is right up there. It's this big old fat angle. Well, I think if I focus on this straight line, I can see that, that this plus this has to be 180. So maybe I can get this little fellow right over here. Let's take this 17 and let's plug it in. So 2 times 17 is 34 plus 10. That means that this is 44 degrees. So if this whole thing has to be 180, and this person is 44, this big angle is going to be 180 minus 44, which is 136 degrees. So final answer to the question. All right, let's try to knock out number 17 here. Uh, number 17, so I kind of get rid of all those old numbers and start fresh. If EA, so now we're talking about a distance, we're not talking about angles anymore. The distance from E to A is 4x plus 6. And the distance from A to B is 2x plus 3. And EB, EB is 27. So EB is the entire length of the segment. So I'm going to use segment addition. Basically, I'm going to say blue plus red equals black. So blue plus red equals black. If you really wanted to get formal, we could say that EA plus AB equals EB. That's kind of my before step. Now we combine some like terms. We get 6x. Combine my constants or my numbers. I get 9. Bring the 27 down. And minus 9 from both sides. You get 18. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. You get x equals 3. Uh, we still have not figured out how long. The final question says how long is AB. So this, or EA, I'm sorry. This represents the distance for EA. So let's take that 3. Let's plug it in. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 6. EA is 18. All right. Last one. Move on down here to the bottom. Suppose that FAB is 10 more than 4 times BAC. Find the measure of BAC. I might have to redraw my picture down here just because I can't fit it all on the same screen. Actually, maybe I can. Maybe I'll kind of shrink it down a little bit. That might help us right here. Kind of. Maybe one more. All right. So let's just see what angles we're talking about, what the relationships are here. So suppose that FAB, that's, that's this angle, is 10 more than 4 times this guy. All right. So this angle is this angle is 10 times more than 4 times this guy. Well, I don't know anything about this guy. Let's call this angle X. And if, if the top angle is 10 more than 4 times that, I could write that out in algebra, and I could say 10 more than 4 times that bottom angle. This one's kind of tougher. So now I've described them both. I have an angle I know nothing about. I have another angle that's 10 more than 4 times the smaller angle. And I do know what those two angles have to do. They have to add up to 180. So I can say 4x plus 10 plus the bottom angle have to be 180 degrees. And combine like terms, I'll get 5x plus 10 is 180. Uh, minus 10 from both sides, and I get 170. And divide, divide, and I get x equals 3, 4. So x is 34. So to find BAC which is BAC, oh, it's just X. So the correct answer there would be 34 degrees. There's another way maybe in class I'll show you where you can just guess and check. So ask me about that in class if the algebra lost you a little bit. Uh, number 19, 
I'll just rock this one out. This one's pretty easy. How many planes are there? Planes are flat surfaces. So we have a top, we have a bottom, we have a right, we have a left, and we have a front, and we have a back. So there are six planes on here. Name the plane that represents the left side. That would be this piece. To name that plane, these are the four points that they're telling me are in the plane, so I can pick any three I want. Let's just call it DAE to make it easy. Number 20, how many segments make up the box? So now we're talking about straight pieces. So segments, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, the top, bottom, five, six, seven, eight, and then the sides, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 segments. Name the segments that represent the top only. So the ones that represent the top would be segment AB, got to put the right uh, notation, segment AD, segment DC, and segment BC. And you could reverse all these letters, it doesn't really matter. All right, so hopefully that'll help you out and get you ready for the quiz tomorrow.